Welcome everyone to today's webinar. I'm Emily Rapley with Becker's Hospital Review. We will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled enter a question for staff and clicking send. We look forward to hearing your questions. Today's session is being recorded and will be available after the event. In about a week following the webinar, we will send all registrants a copy of the presentation. This will be sent to the email you use to register. Please be patient as the post-webinar preparation of materials can take some time. Today's presenter is Ted Grozio. Ted has been with Geisinger for 13 years where he is the Associate Vice President of Revenue Management, overseeing hospital billing and collections along with vendor management and uncompensated care. In a previous role at Geisinger, he managed self-pay collections. Ted has an MBA from the University of Scranton and is a certified revenue cycle professional institutional with the American Association of Healthcare Administrative Management. We are very pleased to introduce this revenue cycle expert for today's webinar on transforming agency performance to improve Geisinger's revenue cycle. At this time, I'm pleased to turn the floor over to Ted to begin today's presentation. Well, thank you for the introduction and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, you can see from the agenda for today's call, uh, we're going to look at the state of the industry and rising self-pay uh, Geisinger's experience with agency manager uh, and what we've encountered along the way and some some of our operational results that we've uh, we've had during this time period. Uh, the first item we're going to work on is the uh, state of the industry and uh, the rising self-pay portion balance. Uh, as you all know, patient uh, self-pay is rising, uh, fueled by the high deductible uh, plans are being offered uh, in the marketplace now. Uh, what does this mean for the revenue cycle? Uh, well, uh, in the past, accounts were settled by the insurance and were closed out. Uh, but however, now uh, what we're seeing is that the accounts are remaining open because there's a patient portion that is owed uh, and needs to be collected. Uh, this increases the accounts that need to be worked um, by having this open balance and with limited FTEs uh, resources available, uh, we have to turn to vendors uh, to help us uh, with these collections uh, on these accounts. Uh, and what industry has shown is that about 20% of accounts receivable right now are outstanding with vendors uh, to uh, help with collections. Uh, when the outsourcing occurs, there's uh, issues and items that are associated with, with this uh, initiative. Uh, there's reconciliation issues, uh, there are vendor ex expense issues that are associated with this and invoicing problems, um, and the use of multiple vendors uh, just complicates the, pro the process. Uh, Geisinger, uh, ourselves, we currently utilize nine different vendors in uh, our follow-up activity. Um, so currently, uh, what we as we move through this, um, the current market situation administratively are um, the, the vendor partnerships are difficult to manage. Uh, when you have one system and one vendor, um, obviously it's less complicated, but when you move into uh, multiple vendors with multiple systems, uh, it creates a, a whole host of different issues trying to uh, reconcile the accounts and making sure that the accounts are placed appropriately. Uh, another uh, item is the visibility on the accounts. Um, you know, the vendors, uh, as you're aware, have their own standard reports that they like to, to provide, but it's very difficult to compare uh, the reports that vendors prepare because they prefer to do it in the method that they're comfortable with that will allow them to show the results in the manner that they would like to. Um, so there's no way to actually compare apples to apples on this. Uh, for trust, um, you know, the outside vendors are supposed to be our business partners, uh, but without any systems in place, how can we be sure that uh, they're being compliant and they're following our policies? Um, so even though 
you know, they are an extension of the organization. We need to understand what they're doing and make sure we can follow on their activity. And finally, uh, the patient experience. Uh, you know, a lot of conversations today are focused on the patient experience uh, to ensure that uh, the services that the health organization is providing um, satisfies the patient. Um, what we need to remember during this is that uh, the patients, even though we've outsourced the work, they're still our patients, uh, and we need to have a stake in how they're treated um, and how they're taken care of when the, our vendors are working on them. So uh, the communication between us and the vendor needs to be uh, exquisite so we can make sure that we're taking care of the patients. All right. So we're going to move in a little bit to uh, Geisinger's experience on this now. So Geisinger is a, a nonprofit of uh, fully integrated health organization. We have our own health plan. Uh, we have 13 hospitals uh, with locations throughout Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Uh, our main campus is in Danville, Pennsylvania. Um, and you can see the amount of residents and um, the members that the health plan serves. And uh, we're an 11 time HFMA MAP award winner. So uh, initial, the initial challenges that we faced um, in our outsourced operations, they were good. Um, we wanted them to be better and we wanted to find a way to make sure that we can make them better. Um, some of the in initial problems that we were having, um, we had no standardization on the placement um, from starting with the file placements all the way through invoicing with the vendors. So uh, with our multiple systems and multiple vendors, this was creating uh, a lot of undue pressure on a lot of the FTEs here to try to manage the relationships. Um, our communications with the vendors was very um, ad hoc, if you will. Um, it was more uh, to place a hold on account to stop collection activity for a period of time while the patient worked on something. Our communication was either a phone call or an email with the, with the vendor, and there wasn't uh, an opportunity to create an audit trail that way. So we were, we were missing something there in the communication process. Um, monitoring performance by the vendors uh, was an issue also. As I mentioned earlier, with no standard reporting, it was difficult to compare to see how the vendors would stack up against each other and how they were performing. And then finally, um, invoices, rec reconciliations, um, definitely a problem with the, the volume that we were dealing with. You know, we had to audit, uh, sample the invoices. We weren't able to fully check all the invoices. So we had concerns about uh, whether we were totally accurate in, about, in the amounts that we were paying out. Okay, so Geisinger implemented agency manager in 2010. Um, and agency manager acts for us as the intermediary between our accounting systems and our vendors. Um, and we have all the data flowing in and out through agency manager, both from us to the vendors and both and from the vendors back to Geisinger. Um, a lot of our challenges were addressed by using the agency manager. Uh, agency manager allowed for standard reporting, um, so we were able to compare performances between the vendors. Uh, it helped us with our invoice verification. Uh, it provided tools to verify uh, the invoice amounts that were being claimed to make sure that they were in line with what was collected. The communication audit trail was established. Um, we were able to work through agency manager to place um, requests with the agencies and also the agencies were able to use agency managers to place requests to us. So there was an audit trail and we were able to uh, see what was outstanding at any given time. And finally, Using agency manager, not only were we able to see how the vendors were performing against each other, but with agency manager, um, they incorporated 
industry performance into it. So we could we were able to see how our vendors uh, compared to the industry, uh, which allowed us to provide feedback to the vendors. Uh, so the data flow for Geisinger. So Geisinger uses uh, Siemens, or as it is now, Cerner and Vision for our hospital platforms. Uh, and we use GE Centricity um, IDX for uh, the professional charges. Um, so currently we utilize an early out vendor uh, to help us out uh, with our self-pay collections. Um, and then we have three bad debt vendors um, after early out and our internal uh, processes are complete. Uh, and then we also have a second chance bad debt vendor. We have two of those. Um, the, the complication of the files that I had mentioned earlier with the resources, uh, currently we're sending about 60 placement files a week through Conance. Uh, we have about 160 transactional files that are going through uh, Conance a week and 200 reconciliation files that go through Conance. Um, with all these file transfers, you know, uh, IT obviously plays an important part and role in this uh, data share, um, but, you know, there are challenges uh, getting IT to uh, make changes to programs and to files uh, when we needed them. And, with the standardization of using agency manager, we were able to overcome that challenge. All right, so we're gonna move on to some slides to show the results for Geisinger. Um, first, uh, the value that Geisinger saw out of this. So this is an annualized value, but um, you know, the $5.3 million uh, we've seen increase in cash collections and some cost savings. Um, where we've seen the biggest value is being able to track uh, the early outs for both the hospital and the clinic. Uh, we've picked up a lot of value there for us. Um, we handle our payment plans internally. Um, we were able to uh, uncover some issues there, which uh, added to our collections and our value. Uh, what we did notice with the early out, the pickup in the early out collections, there was a, a decrease in primary bad debt and secondary bad debt collections. Um, but obviously, getting the money in sooner, um, you know, we're willing we're willing to see that because of uh, being able to uh, speed up the process. Uh, and then we were we did encounter uh, the elimination of invoice errors, uh, where we were able to. Uh, change some of the bills that were received to verify that uh, we were paying the proper amount. Okay, so some of the items just to go into a little bit on, on the value. So on reporting, um, obviously the apples to apples comparison of the vendor performance was huge here. Um, early on in the process, you know, Geisinger started out with two bad debt vendors. Uh, and what we noticed were they were sort of uh, seesawing back and forth in performance. So uh, we we added a third choice, a third vendor to the mix to try to uh, drive um, some competition between the three vendors to see to hopefully drive up collections. Um, it gave us insight into our payment plans internally. As I mentioned, we we uncovered some errors in our process and were able to identify some opportunities. Uh, so that helped us out. Uh, the compliance part, um, we're able to see what the vendors are doing with the accounts. Uh, they report back to agency manager uh, activity that's being transpired on the accounts, whether it's phone calls or letters being sent. And we are able to then manage um, the vendors in that in that manner to make sure that they're meeting our standards and how we expect uh, items to be handled. Uh, account flow. Uh, we now had a tool um, to handle the account flow between uh, Geisinger and the vendors and any changes that needed to be addressed uh, with Geisinger and the vendors. So we were able to 
uh, when we needed to recall accounts, um, we were able to get them back from the agencies. Uh, on, the, on the other side, the agencies were able to communicate with us on information they may have needed, uh, verifying payments or something of that nature. Uh, it's a process that allows us to see what's outstanding at any given time and being able to follow up on that. And then finally, administrative uh, value. Again, the ability to check all the invoices uh, make sure they're validated uh, and the compliance with our uh, programs was very important to us and that uh, agency manager was a lot allowed us to meet our goals in that area um, some insight into the collection activity okay so this graph uh, illustrates the percent of accounts uh, that were called or messaged in the first days um, and as you can see by the lines, we have one vendor that is performing extremely well, um, and we're able to share this information with all the vendors and, you know, compliment them on uh, their performance of almost being at 100% and, uh, you know, having them strive to stay at that level. Um, you know, the second vendor who's increased their collections, uh, you know, we've communicated with them about um, you know the improvement that we like what we've seen uh, but you know best practice puts uh, communications uh, in the first 90 days at 80 percent and we still want to see them climb towards that number um, so you know we were able to provide that feedback for them and then finally the last vendor um, you know they haven't increased and they're pretty stagnant on where they are uh, and we're able to follow up on them and provide um, some information on what we see uh, and have the hard conversation with them about them increasing their performance or, you know, we'll have to take other measures to uh, bring in somebody else to replace them. Uh, you know, they can obviously see that over the time span, they're not improving much. Um, and, you know, the new vendor, which, you know, started around zero in 2016, is outperforming them now. So uh, it puts a lot of pressure on that vendor to increase their performance. Uh, some of the insight into uh, our, our performance, uh, we've, we've noticed that our average balance has increased year over year. Um, the higher deductible plans are obviously playing a factor in that. Uh, what we did notice was that, you know, the small balance collections remain stable for us, but uh, it was the larger balances that, um, you know, collections were down, um, even though they were, they were receiving more accounts for larger balances. So we were able to take this information back to the vendors, and, you know, we had discussions about strategies that could be used um, you know, whether it was dialing campaigns or other uh, strategies to try to reach these people, uh, patients in a more timely manner and in also a more frequent manner to try to get to build on to collections. Um, the next graph uh, is one of the ones that, uh, you know, we've spent a lot of time with the vendors on, and it's the use of our vendors using payment plans. Um, and as you can see uh, from vendor number one there, uh, they heavily use uh, the, vet, the payment plan option, uh, and a large portion of their collections come from payment plans. Uh, the other vendors don't utilize that as much, uh, and obviously the collections we see from them are lower because of that. So, um, you know, we've had many discussions with them uh, about increasing uh, the the collections from using from payment plan options. Um, you know, they still have to use the Geisinger guidelines for the payment plans, but we feel that it's a good way to keep a steady cash flow coming in. Uh, on these bad debt accounts. Uh, here's one of the, this is one of my, uh, the graphs that I, um, I, I like to use with the vendors. Um, this one shows uh, by vendor 
um, the amount of time that's lapsed um, since the last payment is received on the outstanding payment plans. Um, and as you can see, the, the, the one in the middle there, uh, that is the bad debt vendor that uses the payment plans very extensively and has large collections. And as you can see, um, most of the payments um, from the last, the time elapsed from the last payment is shorter on those. It's no more than 60 days. Uh, whereas the other vendors who struggle with the payment plans don't have a good process in place for following up to ensuring compliance with uh, sending in the payment on the scheduled basis. Uh, so this is a slide that we uh, we share with the vendors uh, and go over with them to ensure that you know they understand the process because um, you know having like the last section of the graph there, having the one vendor with that many outstanding accounts over 180 days is just totally unacceptable for us. Uh, so, you know, we've had conversations around uh, that vendor and around their uh, use of the payment plans and how they're monitoring the payment plans. So this is a, a look at um, our internal payment plans. Um, I did mention earlier, you know, we did uh, we did find some issues with our internal payment plans. And uh, as you could see in the snapshots, um, you know, which span over about six months, you could see the increase in collections that um, we were able to ascertain by uh, collecting and fixing the errors that w we've, uh, we were able to uncover. So it was very beneficial for us uh, to include this in our process so we could uh, we can understand how we're doing on the payment plans also for, for our self-pay patients. Okay. So then just to finally to wrap uh, back into the original slide, um, it, what has changed for Geisinger during this process? Uh, we, you know, we're better able to monitor agency performance uh, and compare it to the other agencies and the industry standards. Uh, it's allowed us to, um, you know, share with them the performance against their peers that they're working with on the same type of account, uh, and allows them to see where they where they rank. Um, we share this information with them um, on a monthly basis um, and get together with them to talk about the results. Uh, you know, it. Agency managers helped us identify problem areas, uh, and we're able to communicate this with the, the vendors, uh, and we develop uh, strategies to correct the deficiencies in the processes to ensure that we can get the maximum effort and collection from our agencies. Uh, we have a better flow of communications with the agencies. Um, we developed with the um, information using agency manager, we have the audit trail that we had been desiring to make sure that uh, the information uh, is being followed on and it's being acted upon when we expect it to be, um, and we can see what's outstanding at any given time. And then finally, um, we were able to um, verify and simplify the invoice processing for ourselves. So we're not only are we able to verify all the invoices, uh, it made the process easier than uh, randomly checking them um, uh, and using uh, an FTE resource to do that, uh, which that FTE can then be assigned to other uh, duties. Um, so that's all for Geisinger's uh, experience with agency manager. Uh, I wanted to just say thank you for uh, your time today, and I will turn it back to Emily. Thank you, Ted. That was an excellent presentation. Um, so now we'll begin the question and answer session. As a quick reminder to our audience, you can submit any questions by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled enter a question for staff and clicking send. Um, it looks like we've already got some questions rolling in, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, Ted, the first question from a member of our audience is, when looking at the patient experience from the vendors, how do you measure success? So I, I think the biggest thing for us is uh, to ensure that um, items are acted upon in a timely manner 
uh, and to the result that we're expecting them uh, to be acted upon. Um, we do follow up with the patients, um, um, especially, um, you know, in items like when we're placing a hold on the account, we do follow up with the patients to tell them that that's been enacted um, and uh, we expect them to do their part on why we place the hold and then we recontact them before the hold is over uh, to ensure that it doesn't need to be extended or uh, what the end result is going to be. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so our next question is about uh, specialty specific vendors. Um, so this audience member asks, are any of your outsource vendors specialty specific, such as anesthesia specific? Uh, currently, we don't utilize any specialty vendors through Conans. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so our next question, do you share uh, each vendor results with other similar vendors? Uh, yes, we do. So, uh, for example, for the, the bad debt vendors, um, for both the first chance or the second chance, so on the first chance side, there's three of them. Uh, we do share the results with them so they can see how they compare against their peer group. Um, uh, similarly, on the secondary bad debt, uh, we have two vendors there. We do the exact same thing. We share the results with both vendors um, and let them know, you know, where they stand and how they're performing against each other. And, you know, we've seen that um, it, it adds a sense of urgency to the vendors because, uh, especially in the case of the three, nobody wants to be the third vendor in line. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's not um, a desired place. Right. Um, okay, so our next audience member asks, um, do you have your vendors agree to these controls mutually or by caveat? Uh, no, it's uh, they have to agree to the controls to be uh, associated with Geisinger and to uh, get work from us. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, we have a lot of questions rolling in. So our next question, um, is this an application the agencies actually work in directly and then we report out of it, or is it a reporting tool? Um, it's more of uh, a reporting tool in the sense that we'll, we'll send our files through agency manager. Uh, agency manager will divvy up, you know, who's supposed to get one, what accounts, uh, and then the agencies basically will load it into their record keeping system or their collection system so they can, uh, you know, perform the functions they need to perform. And then they re report back to agency manager. So. Uh, you know, we'll send transaction files, uh, the vendors will send uh, reconciliation files back to agency manager, and agency manager does all the, the compilation of the data uh, and then provides reporting. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so we have an audience member uh, who would like a little more clarification around um, pa the patient contact that you talked about. Um, so they are asking, when you discuss patient contact within the first 90 days, um, what constitutes a patient contact? Does sending a statement count as a patient contact? And are there any return mail or bad phone number reports? So the, the counting of the, um, the letters or the phone calls, obviously, um, with the letters, a statement does count. Um, it does not count um, the original um, statement that has to go out about the collection activity, um, but it, it'll count the other statements or letters that are sent and the phone call activity uh, that are done on the, the account. And uh, there was a second part to that. I'm sorry, I forgot what it was. Hang on one second, I'll repeat it. Um, so does you answer that question? Are there any um, return mail or bad phone number reports? Um, I would I'll have to get back to you on that. I am actually not quite sure. Um, uh, let me get information back out to everyone on that. I apologize. Okay, perfect. Um, let's go to the next question. Um, what is your patient payment plan default rate? So we, um, and I hope I'm answering this the 
the way the, the, the person who asked it intended. Um, so what we do is, um, you know, we, we don't charge interest on the, the payment plan and we divide the balance up and we have specific guidelines based on the amount of the balance, how long the, pay, the payment plan can last. Okay, thank you. Um, so our next question is about agency performance. Um, this audience member asks, is the agency performance part of your service agreement? Uh, yes, we put it in there. Okay. Um, so for the next question, how do you determine which accounts get sent to which vendor? Um, so for all the splits we do, it's typically based on an alpha split. Okay, perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so now we have another question from the audience. What were the challenges of implementing Agency Manager um, from sending files directly to each vendor or sending through Agency Manager? Well, I, I think the, um, the biggest challenge was getting uh, just set up on the on the process. So it was a long process uh, on, on the Geisinger side to get set up on agency manager, and some of that had to do with resources on our end. But um, you know the the time commitment we had prior to agency manager, uh, specifically from our IT resources, was very large. Um, we do have, uh, as I mentioned, multiple accounting systems. Um, you know, we have actually one for each facility and then one for the professional side. So just the amount of files that had to be created by uh, the resources, uh, our IT resources was overwhelming. Uh, what agency manager brought to the table was the standardization of being able to send the files and, you know, have them do the splits instead of, you know, us splitting between uh, the the alphabet to send to uh, different vendors uh, so so that getting just getting that to that point for us uh, was our challenge and once we got was it, were able to get the files to comments everything went smooth after that Ted I think your phone uh, might be cutting out okay um, I'm sorry can you hear me okay Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, it's try. Oh, great. Okay. All right. So I, I don't know how much you heard of that last answer then. Uh, um, I'll just uh, summarize and just say that uh, it, the IT challenges um, to get multiple files to multiple vendors, that was uh, created a large resource on the Geisinger side, uh, moving to agency manager, um, uh, consolidated that process and, and allowed things to flow much better. Thanks, Ted, um, for that response. Um, so we have another question that um, has come in here. Um, does the agency manager allow you to track KPIs like three of days from placement to payment, touches, et cetera? Uh, there is functionality in Agency Manager that will uh, help with tracking the KPIs. Great. Um, thank you for that there. Um, our next question from audience is, are you a part owner of Conant or are they completely independent? Uh, they are completely independent of Geisinger. Okay, thank you, Ted. I'm back on the line now. Um, so we'll go ahead and move to the next question. Um, do you attribute improved collections to having use of the tool? And if so, how do you determine the contribution of improved collections? Um, yeah, I do. Um, I do attribute the improved collections to uh, the use of the tool. I, I think um, the transparency which we were able to see and share the data uh, and review what's going on with the accounts with the vendors uh, has worked 
uh, in our ability to collect more in a more timely manner. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so we still have a lot of great questions coming in. Um, let's go to the next one. We have an audience member uh, who would like to know if you are at all concerned that the agencies knowing the specific results from each other gives them a tool to sell in the industry against each other. Um, I'm, I am personally uh, not concerned about that. Um, and that's only my take on it. Um, primarily because what I'm focused on is making sure that the performance for Geisinger is the best that it can be. Okay, that makes a lot of fun. Um, so we have another audience member who would like to know about early out and DD vendors. If you mm -hmm. use early out and DD vendors, what types of activity do you do with internal collection? Um, so, so the early out vendor actually what we do is that's an alpha split also. Um, we keep half of the um, inventory in-house uh, and have the Geisinger staff work it. Uh, and then the other half gets outsourced to the early out vendor uh, as an extension of Geisinger to, to work the account. So after our, um, after our standard time frame for allowing self-pay uh, patients to pay the, the bills, um, we then send them to our bad debt vendors, um, and they have a certain amount of time to try to uh, manage collections on them. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so we still have a ton of great questions coming in. Our next one, do you require an RFP in order to receive offers for service? Um, when we go out to bid, we do um, ask for RFPs. Okay, perfect. Um, so our next, our next question from the audience, is this application for self-pay collections only, or can it be used for insurance small balance collections or a payer specific such as BWC? Um, we really, I, I really focused on the bad debt collections, but we actually use agency manager. We have uh, some vendors would help us on an extended business office arrangement with insurance collections. Uh, those are also run through comments. Perfect. Thank you. So our next question is about litigation. Um, do you litigate? And if so, is this application helpful um, in tracking that? Um, we do. Uh, in certain cir circumstances, we will litigate. Um, we do not send that information through the agency manager, though. That's a more of a uh, individual basis that goes for litigation. Okay, perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so our next question from the audience, was Geisinger able to negotiate improved vendor rates as a result of using the agency manager solution? Uh, actually, yes, we always look um, at the rates that are being charged um, and uh, it, we use the information to, um, when we're up for renewal, to try to renegotiate the rates. Okay, um, so we'll move on to our next question. Uh, with three BD vendors, how do you select which accounts go to which vendor? I think we may have asked that question already. Yeah, yeah, no, it's an alpha split. We did, we talked about that. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Um, okay, so were the baseline metrics at the time of implementation identified by Geisinger or by Common? Um, it was really built uh, as the information flowed through comments. Uh, at, on our own systems, we didn't do um, uh, a good of a job as we could have to try to track that. Okay, um, that's helpful, thank you. Our next question is about savings on invoices. So this audience member asked, um, are savings as a result of all vendors, BD, EO, insurance follow-up, or is it just BD invoices? Uh, that would be a result of all vendor activity, so it would include the insurance follow-up. Okay. And then as the second part to this question, um, the audience member said it showed about 95000 annually. Um, was it much larger to start than vendors started making sufficient corrections? 
Uh, yeah, it was it was higher at the beginning. Um, you know, as we uncovered some of the issues that were occurring, uh, you know, they were able to place uh, corrections in their systems to stop that from happening. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Ted. Um, so for our next question, how long do your primary agencies have to collect before the accounts are placed with secondary placement? Uh, the primary agencies are given the accounts for six months. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's move on to our next question. Who uh, sets up and creates the report? Um, so Conant's agency manager has um, a set of reports, uh, but the, the user can actually go in and uh, run reports and, you know, data mine, if, they, if you will, on what they would like to see. Okay, excellent. Um, we have another question from the audience about uh, patient communication. So how has introducing agency manager affected patient communication? Um, well, it's made it better from our perspective um, because with the ability to have the audit trail, uh, you know, the communication goes to and from agency manager about what's being requested um, and having that audit trail and being able to see where in the process that request is uh, allows us to inform the patient uh, of, you know, if the request has been taken care of or uh, you know, if the patient calls back in, uh, we could check on what the status is of the request uh, right away for them without having to, um, you know, uh, say that we'll have to call you back after we find out. Um, it, it allows for a more timely information flow. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so we'll move to our next audience question. Um, what do you see in terms of the performance between your in-house early out alpha split versus the outsourced early out vendor? Is there a large discrepancy in either direction? And if so, how do you plan on changing? Um, so we've been monitoring that for a little while. Um, the Actually, what we've seen right now is the in-house collections is doing uh, better. Um, you know, so we've used that in a lot of discussions with the early out vendor uh, to improve performance and, you know, to provide feedback and, uh, you know, basically um, to be blunt, to tell them what's on at stake for them because uh, of the, our ability to do it better at the current time. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, we have another audience member with a question about the alpha split. So this audience member says, Alpha splits are not always created equal relative to dollars assigned. How do you determine who is doing better if balances are really different? Um, well, in agency manager, um, you know, one of the functions and to see um, if, if the split is appropriate or not and, you know, make the appropriate assumptions if it's not the same. Um, you know, historically, I, I understand the concern, but I think historically, if you go back and you, and you look at items, you know, when you choose the splits, um, you, the accounter's volume is roughly the same. And then what you find over time is that the dollars sort of trail to be the same also. But it, it is a good point, and you're able to see that in agency manager. Okay, absolutely. Um, so this next question is about deceased patients. How do you handle deceased patients? Um, when we find out that the, the patient is deceased, um, we usually have the account returned to us and then we have our internal processes that we go through to uh, uh, mitigate the balance. Okay, thank you, Ted. Um, so for our next question, were there any surprise improvements that came as a result of the added insight into agency performance? Um, I don't know that it, it was a surprise, more that it was, you know, able to substantiate the vendors, uh, whether they were performing well or poorly, um, 
based on the data. And I, and I say that because, you know, I think everybody gets in their own mind based on what they're hearing, uh, who's doing well and who's not doing well. Uh, but a lot of the times you don't have uh, uh, the data that supports that. It's just more of a gut feeling, if you will. Um, and the ability to have the data and to see it, uh, who's doing well and who's not doing well, um, was definitely uh, an eye opener. Absolutely. Um, that's really interesting. Um, okay, we still have a lot of questions coming in from the audience here. So we'll go on to the next one. How long do secondary agencies have the accounts before they're returned as efforts exhausted? Um, currently it's six months, but that policy is actually under review right now. Okay, thank you. Um, how do you guard against one agency receiving an uneven amount of larger balance accounts? Um, again, we, we look at the data that's um, out there for the agencies, um, but we really don't we really don't uh, do any reshuffling, if you will, of any of the accounts. We we really stick to the alpha split. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so for our next question, is your cost to collect less for in-house resources or outside vendors? Um, so, if you wanted to compare apples to apples, so our in-house resources compared to our uh, early out vendor, um, the cost to collect is slightly lower for in-house. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, we'll move on to our next question here. Uh, is there a bi-direction feed between the organization's accounting system and the vendor system to allow sharing of information between the two? Um, so, if I understood the question, there's no direct link between the two. Um, the, the files that we transmit to the vendors uh, contain all the necessary data points for uh, mm -hmm. the vendor's uh, use, um, and then they will load them into their system. There's no direct link between the two systems. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, we do have an audience member who would like to know, um, you mentioned you were on IDX. Uh, does this work with Epic as well? Um, uh, I would yep. believe it does. And I'll, I'll, honestly, um, you know, we're Geisinger is moving to Epic, so uh, we expect it to work. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you have? Uh, do you also have vendors that work third-party liability, and would this track settlement values? Um, we actually do have one vendor um, who we just brought on board to do some third-party liability uh, work for us. Uh, we've chose not to put those through comments right now. Okay. Thank you, Todd. Um, so, how have the additional reports allowed you to compare agents? How have the additional reports allowing you to compare agencies changed the way you communicate with and approach your current vendors? Um, I think the, the reports that we use, it gives us the ability uh, to identify problem areas and be pro, more proactive with our communication with the vendors. Um, you know, we, as I mentioned, we do meet with the vendors on a routine basis. Um, you know, and they like to present their information and their results, um, you know, the way they're comfortable with presenting it. Uh, but then we turn the discussion right to the agency manager results um, and we're able to then, you know, compare and contrast them. And, you know, we do have conversations with them about, um, you know, how they're performing against their peer group. So I, I think, you know, it, it's changed our approach in, um, you know, don't be, don't be the vendor that's on the bottom. Um, you know, here's what we're seeing that you are not doing or that you're doing well. Um, and we're able to have more focused conversations based on that. Thanks, Ted. Um, so for our next question, is there any collaboration between vendors? Uh, actually, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. 
Um, since payment plans lead to better collections, what strategies have you taken um, to ensure that your vendors are increasing the use of payment plans? Okay. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, we share a lot of the, the reporting from agency manager with the vendors, um, especially the payment plan side slides that, you know, were included in the presentation. Um, based on the, the vendor that's utilizing it more than the others, uh, it's easy for us to point out to the other two vendors, um, you know, how successful this could be for them. Uh, to utilize this, and you know, uh, you know, they they work on uh, you know commission on the recovery, so they want to be able to um, uh, accumulate as much cash collected as possible. So, you know, we stress to them about the payment plans, about following up on the payment plans to make sure that delinquencies are addressed. Um, and to um, make sure they stick to the Geisinger standards for the payment plans. But, uh, you know, obviously the, the best choice is to uh, collect the entire balance at once, but in lieu of that, you know, offer the payment plan and make sure you have the processes in place to uh, follow up on it and make sure it doesn't be, it isn't delinquent. Um, absolutely. Thank you for that great response. Um, that was a really great question as well. We still do have a ton of questions flowing in, so we'll try to get as many answered as we can before the end of the hour. Um, so our next question from the audience, is there any collaboration between vendors that have separate accounts for the same patient? Are any new accounts automatically added to an existing pay plan? Um, so the way we we handle it at, at Geisinger is, um, you know, the, the the patient would have to request that um, on our internal payment plans that they, they add the additional balances to the payment plan. We would allow them to do that. Um, so we would expect that the vendors would allow that also. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but just as, I think part of it was about the crossover. There wouldn't be uh, any crossover between the vendors because of the alpha split. Okay, excellent. Um, so what have you found agencies uh, do as a strategy as a result of the system, um, which separates the agencies the most in way of performance? Um, uh, so the, the one agency for us that, you know, is performing above the other ones right now, it, they embraced it. Um, the, the information sharing, um, they used it as uh, motivation for their teams. Um, and, you know, the results show that they, they make the contact uh, as we expect them to early in the process. Uh, they're utilizing the payment plans uh, and their overall collections are strong. So, uh, you know, that's what we look for and that's why we want to share the information. Definitely. Um, so our next question is about the agency invoice. So does agency manager generate the BD agency invoice or do you compare the invoice from the agency with what the agency manager shows? You know, we compare the invoice. The, the vendor will still complete the invoice, uh, but we compare that to the information in agency manager. Okay, thanks, Dad. Rapid fire, thanks for bearing with me here. Uh, we got a couple more minutes and a few more questions to answer. Um, so our next one, um, if there's no directional upload to Envision or GE, how do you accept notes or do you accept notes from your vendors? either from early out or BD? Um, so early out, uh, and I apologize if I misstated it earlier. So the early out uh, does notate into our system. There's no uh, data flow um, between the two systems, but they have the ability to go into our accounting system and make notes in it. Uh, the bad debt vendors um, don't, uh, pass notes back or forth to us. Um, they don't have access to the system. Uh, our insurance vendors that are assisting us on uh, an extended business office placement, again, while there's no data link between the two systems, they are able to notate in our systems and pass the, uh, to notate the account so we can see what activity has transpired. Okay, thank you so much for clarifying that. 
Um, so for our next question, what is the net cost value that Geisinger has achieved through implementing Agency Manager? I, I am sorry, I don't have that in front of me to provide right now. Okay, thank you, Ted. Um, that looks like all the questions we have today. Um, do you have any other final thoughts before we conclude the webinar? Um, I do not. Um, I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to everyone today. Absolutely. Um, so that brings us to the end of today's program. Thank you so much, Ted, for your insights today um, and for answering all the questions. And thank you to our audience for participating. Please enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to having you join us for future webinars.